Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is the Vive wireless adapter. This is the official HTC Vive wireless adapter, and the alternative to TPCast. I've been looking forward to trying this one out. I've had it for two weeks now, and it's got to go back soon, but I've been testing it, and I will be able to give you my thoughts on what it's like to install, what it's like to use. I've been putting it through the ringer and testing. I've obviously been using TPCast, so it's good to be able to compare with the two. That there is the link box that allows you to connect your computer wirelessly and it replaces the standard link box and then you get cables and all the other peripherals inside. Briefly discuss uh, the cost is £299 for the standard Vive version, £369 for the Vive Pro, which seems very expensive and it probably is, especially if you're like me and you paid £700 for your Vive originally. However, it is a, a brilliant upgrade. Going wireless on your Vive is so magnificently good. I just can't do it justice because ditching those wires makes it for a lot more freedom means you can move around a lot more and it's just far more immersive experience inside the box you get a few little things the setup of this is actually fairly straightforward if you saw me installing tp cast it was quite complicated it had a number of different things however this one is a bit more technical because it does require you to install a pcie card on your motherboard and that might put some people off. So two things, the main things that are going to put people off are the price and that installation process. It does mean that you need to install it on your motherboard and you need a computer, a proper full computer for it, like a desktop computer, rather than a laptop because you can't install PCIe cards on those. So that kind of limits your options. That there is the and base station which basically tracks the movement. So you know, uh, of your headset, thanks to the adapter that sits on top of it, which I'll show you how to install later. And here is the PCIe card. Now that needs to be installed on a PCIe X1 slot. And if you can't do that, then you need an X4. And I did find that was a problem because the X1 on mine would not allow me to install it because there are two screws on top of this card, which then scraped along the heat shield that protected my IO outputs on the back of the motherboard so it basically makes it impossible to install on the x1 i don't know whether you're going to have the same problem or not it might vary from motherboard to motherboard but it wasn't ideal however i am happy to report that it does work in the x4 so it's fine and here is the battery pack this is a 5700 milliamp battery pack that has quick charging thanks to usb-c connection it does still, however, take quite a while to charge, so I'd recommend, highly recommend charging it before you start using it because it takes a few hours and you will only get around two hours of play out of it, so that's quite frustrating if you run out of battery or if you haven't got any battery before you even start, you'll have a very short experience, so please make sure you charge that first. You obviously also need to install the card on your machine and I would highly recommend a number of other things. I'd also recommend running your Vive in standard mode with the wires Set, make sure you've got your room space set up as you normally would. Ensure that the headset, controller and controller firmware is all up to date, as up to date as possible. You've got Steam VR updated as much as you can as well. Make sure you've got your latest graphics drivers installed because you'll need that too. Make sure Windows is fully up to date. Make sure basically that all your software and firmware is as up to date as it can be because otherwise you're going to hit some problems. I had some niggles with installation and it took me probably a couple of hours because I needed to make sure that all of that was sorted out. I found the headset was out of date, the controllers were out of date. Even though I use it regularly, everything needed updating and it was a real frustration. However, the actual installation of the device on your headset is relatively easy as I will show you when we get into it. And it is basically that easy on TP cuffs as well. It's basically taking some wires out and replacing them with some other wires. This one here connects the new um, wireless adapter to the power pack on your back. And this is the adapter which sits on top of your head. And that is really easy, easy to install. It has some very simple inputs. You see this Velcro system basically allows it to attach to the headset and it sits on top of the straps. And you can see there's an HDMI and USB and audio port there. Some satisfying Velcro peeling. There's a hook underneath there you can see which allows you to attach it with ease to the head strap, which I'll show you a bit later on. Inside the box you also have some very basic instructions which basically says make sure you download the software 
take your computer apart, install the card. I'd recommend also that you make sure your computer's nice and cool before you do that and that you have a anti-static wrist strap so you don't ruin your computer with static electricity because that would be very upsetting if you're trying to install this. The instructions are fairly basic. Also found the instructions on the website weren't that amazing. Um, but it is quite a simple system to install. And if you watch this video, I'll show you how to do the heads headset itself. The PCIe card, unfortunately, I don't have any decent footage of, but it's basically a plug and play system. It's a bit of a fiddle. It took me a little while to get in. And as I said, you need to make sure you can actually fit it in the relevant slots. So I couldn't fit it in my X1. It would fit in the X4. It took a bit of jiggling and some effort, but I got it in there eventually. And I'm happy to confirm that it worked. It didn't cause any problems. This little base station uh, basically works in the same way as a webcam. It attaches to the top of your monitor and then you need to point it at the play space where you're playing. And that has a good view of the, give it a good view of the area and that will allow it to receive and transmit data to the headset wirelessly. Yeah, actually found that it really worked really well, even when the view of this uh, its view was obscured and it couldn't quite see me it still managed to pick me up somehow obviously you still need the standard tracking base station set up in the usual places in the corners of the rooms this is an extra but it plugs straight into the PCIe card and allows it to track you uh, that way and it doesn't require any extra USB ports or anything which is really good that's a double bonus because you don't want to use any more also it means you don't any, no need longer to plug in your link, standard link box with the cables. In fact, the system recommends you don't do that. So, uh, you use this new setup instead, otherwise you confuse it if you have both plugged in. So you don't need anything plugged into your graphics card, which is excellent. So here's the process <clears throat> for installing. Basically, you remove that cover by pushing forward on it at the top of the Vive, and then you slip those cables out. If you have struggled with that, I'd recommend just pushing your thumbs down on it, downwards and then forwards, because there's a couple of hooks underneath that you keep it in place. Once you've done that, tease those cables out of here. If you still have the standard head strap, then this process should be straightforward because you can basically follow what I'm doing. Now you'll note the little hook there where you take out the wires on the head strap, that's where this hook goes and the adapter itself so basically slips over it and then you put the velcro around to secure it further in place it's remarkably easy to do this bit of the setup it's not too much faff at all however as i said make sure that the firmware and everything is updated on your headset first because it you it's not terribly easy to do it afterwards unless you unplug it all again plug it back into your machine then force the update then go through this whole process again which you don't really want to do because that's quite a lot of hassle so there that is installed now it's just a case of plugging it in and plugging the cables back in I said earlier that was the audio input actually it's not I made a mistake obviously it's HDMI USB and power So on the front bit, you plug those three cables in, and it's got this three in one. Feed it through the loops to go underneath the cover. You'll also need to plug your headset or headphones in this way as well, depending on what you're using. Which, by the way, is a bit of a niggle. I hope you're using in-ear headphones. That's the best setup for this, because I found I was using over-the-ear headphones and a headset which made it quite uncomfortable to wear because it's the the way the link box sit, know, sits on your head you either have to have the headband of your headphones behind or in front of it you can't put it on top of it which makes it quite uncomfortable unless you've got a very small head i found it a bit of a struggle especially during the boxing game because it kept falling off <laughs> when I was putting it on the back of my head you can see obviously that takes up quite a lot of room it isn't very heavy though it's quite light and it sits nicely on your head you don't really notice it and because you haven't got the tugging constant anymore it makes for a quite comfortable use and here it is compared to the TP cast you can see the TP cast is installed on the deluxe audio head strap you can install the Vive version as well on that deluxe audio head strap but I wanted to be able to compare the two side by side 
and that's what it looks like. And here it is in action. Here I am embarrassingly embarrassing myself for your joy. But you can see no cables whatsoever. If you look behind me where it's dark on the right, that's where my computer is set up and that is where the tracker is set up. You can see the base station behind me, standard base station. But you can see sometimes the fridge and the wall block the view and yet it still has a really good tracking setup and it works surprisingly well. You'll also note what I was saying about my headphones, I'm having to wear the headphones in front of the link box which is quite uncomfortable but otherwise if I wore it behind it the headphones just kept falling off constantly. If you've got in-ear headphones then it's not a problem at all. It is, the tracking is superb, it works really well, it's very good and it, I didn't notice any problems. The only problem I had is that the power box only lasts for two hours so if you've got a good gaming session going on and it runs out it just cuts off you don't get any warning to tell you that that's going to happen you just it just goes black all of a sudden while you're in the middle of a game which is quite upsetting can confirm however that the microphone still works because i have used that playing multiplayer with a friend so that all works nicely straight out of the box so that's great uh, the audio works really well. There's just literally no problems with any of it. It's very good. The only niggles, as I said, are going to be price and the installation of the PCIe card, which is a faff, especially if you don't have the space on your computer to fit it in or you don't know how to do it. That's going to off be off-putting. However, you don't need all the extra stuff. So with the TP cast, you need to have a wireless router and you need to have another thing that was plugged into computer with this you really don't need anything i also found every time i turn my computer on and booted up the wireless software it just connected straight away and it worked really well as long as it was powered on one point of note one trouble i did have when setting up trying to pair it initially with that wireless app is that i didn't realize the y vive symbol on the box is actually a button that you can press you press that button and it will connect to the system and that's how you pair it this has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave me a comment if you have any questions. I'd highly recommend this bit of kit. It's excellent. Please like, subscribe and come back in future. If you hate the video, also let me know because I'm always trying to improve. Thanks very much.